When Allied aircraft were forced down in the frozen expanse of northern Norway during World War II, survival was never guaranteed. The Arctic was a death sentence for the unprepared. Temperatures could plummet to minus 30, winds stripped away body heat within minutes, and even finding dry fuel was a battle. Yet, against the odds, dozens of downed pilots and reconnaissance crews survived days or even weeks behind enemy lines. Their secret was not luck, but a small, unassuming metal box, the Arctic Survival Kit. Crafted through a combination of field science, sailors' lore, and hard-learned experience from the coldest campaigns on Earth. What it contained, and how it worked, represents one of the most ingenious and overlooked chapters of wartime survival history. The kit was built from the lessons of early Arctic expeditions. The Arctic Air Force survival kits issued to Allied pilots operating near Scandinavia and the Barents Sea were direct descendants of the gear used by polar explorers and whalers decades before the war. Norwegian and British engineers studying early 20th century expeditions noticed that sailors who relied on natural fats, hides and seal-based materials endured freezing conditions far longer than those using early synthetics or untreated cloth. This knowledge shaped the contents of the survival kit. Every kit had to meet a single brutal condition. It had to keep a wounded man alive, alone, and often immobile in snow for at least 72 hours. The kits were packed in waterproof tins, small enough to fit under the pilot's seat or strapped to his flight suit. Inside were odd and practical items. Tins of whale oil, a folded sheet of grease-impregnated cloth, a few slabs of reindeer hide, fishing tackle, concentrated pemmican rations, waterproof matches, and a compact folding stove fueled by solid tablets. Each element was chosen for multiple uses. Whale oil was not just fuel. It was life-saving insulation. Reindeer hide wasn't for decoration. It was a biological heater that retained warmth even when soaked. Modern readers might dismiss whale oil as a relic, but during the Arctic campaigns it was the single most valuable substance in a survival kit. It resisted freezing down to temperatures that rendered ordinary greases useless. Downed pilots were instructed to use it in three ways. To waterproof their boots, to rub on exposed skin to prevent frostbite, and to light a tiny wick lamp that could run for hours on a few tablespoons of oil. The faint, smoky flame was enough to thaw ice-crusted gloves or melt snow for drinking water. One of the lesser-known functions of whale oil was preserving fabric and leather. The thick coats worn by Norwegian resistance guides often had whale oil rubbed into their seams, which prevented ice accumulation and kept moisture out. A modern survivalist can apply the same principle using natural oils such as lanolin, beef tallow, or even mineral oil in emergencies. When applied to boots, gloves, or canvas gear, these oils create a flexible seal that resists freezing rain, an advantage that can still save hikers or explorers today. The grease cloth packed inside these kits looked unremarkable, a heavy square of waxed cotton coated in animal fat and paraffin, but it was actually a technological marvel for its time. It could be wrapped around the body as an emergency bivouac sack used to line the inside of snow trenches or stretched over branches to create a wind barrier. Pilots stranded after crash landings would often dig shallow snow pits, line them with this cloth and curl inside like a cocoon. That layer trapped radiant body heat while repelling melting snow. 
Its effectiveness came from a clever balance of permeability and coating density. The grease didn't block air entirely, preventing condensation build-up, yet it created enough of a seal to stop evaporative heat loss, the real killer in freezing winds. Anyone interested in bushcraft or cold weather preparedness can, you know, recreate this by blending wax and animal fat, then applying it to canvas or old cotton sheeting to form a reusable field tarp. When folded, it fits into a small pouch, yet can act as a full body wrap in emergencies, exactly as the wartime versions did. Among all natural materials tested during the war, reindeer hide outperformed everything else for heat retention and moisture management. The secret really lay in its hollow hair fibres, which trapped air and resisted compression even when damp. Allied survival kits included small reindeer hide panels that could serve as sitting pads, boot liners or chest wraps. Norwegian airmen and partisans often used them to cover vital organs when sleeping in snow trenches, as conserving core heat meant the difference between life and death. Modern survivalists have, you know, rediscovered the same principle through synthetic analogues like closed-cell foam, but honestly none match the versatility of natural reindeer hide. It can be used as an insulating pad beneath a sleeping bag wrapped around feet to prevent conductive heat loss, or even used to line improvised mittens. And when paired with the grease cloth mentioned earlier, it forms a two-layer system identical in purpose to modern bivisacs. Proof, really, that wartime ingenuity predicted today's outdoor gear design decades in advance. Accounts from downed air crews show how these items work together in practice. After bailing out or crash landing, the first priority was shelter. Pilots would use parachute fabric and the grease cloth to form a half-dome windbreak, then line the floor with reindeer hide to insulate from snow. Whale oil was used immediately to lubricate frozen zippers, grease boots, and fill small tins to act as heat lamps. Once minimal warmth was established, they'd melt snow to drink and ration pemmican, a dense mix of dried meat and fat that stayed edible indefinitely. What stands out from these records is not heroism but method. The kit taught survival through discipline. Each step supported the next. The reindeer hide saved calories by preserving body heat, the whale oil provided fire and waterproofing, and the grease cloth created an environment where both could function. The simplicity was its genius. Every item could serve three or more purposes, a design principle still vital for any modern emergency kit. The Arctic survival kits used in Norway stand as a reminder that effective survival doesn't rely on high technology, but on understanding natural materials and their properties. What pilots carried in those small tins represented centuries of local knowledge, from the whalers of Tromsø to the Sami reindeer herders whose hides and oils kept them alive through endless winters. Recreating this approach today teaches more than history. It revives the mindset of resilience and resourcefulness that defined an entire generation. Knowing how to waterproof fabric with fat, insulate using animal fibre, or produce lasting warmth from simple oil, and wick can mean survival in extreme conditions, now as much as it did then. For more in-depth explorations into lost survival systems, field gear, and wartime ingenuity that shaped modern preparedness, subscribe to Backyard Wisdom and share this video with those who value real knowledge over gadgets.
The wisdom that saved pilots in frozen Norway still has lessons to teach those who face nature on its own terms.